In the first outcome, we'll describe the important differences in between the essential and the non-essential amino acids. So, what is this structure over here? It is your plasma membrane. And my question is, can we import protein directly into the cell? Well, the answer is no, because proteins, they are way too big to pass through the phospholipid bilayer. So what do we do? We'll first have to digest proteins down into their building blocks which are amino acids that can be circulated in our bloodstream. And with the use of specialized protein transporter, these amino acids can be imported into our cells. So inside our cells, the amino acids can be used for the anabolism of new protein molecules, or sometimes the old and damaged protein can be broken down and recycled to generate more amino acids. Aside from proteins, amino acids can also be used in the synthesis of nitrogenous containing compounds such as neurotransmitters, nucleic acids and so on. But what happens when we need energy, especially during starvation? Well, we split amino acids into its carbon skeleton and the nitrogen waste product. That's because we can only generate energy from the carbon skeleton, not the waste product. While for the nitrogen, nitrogen waste product, it will then be converted into urea and eventually be excreted in the form of urine. Speaking about nitrogen, we get it primarily from our diet. And we first produce the nitrogen waste in the form of NH3 or ammonia that is toxic. But later in the liver, we convert this toxic compound into urea, which is non-toxic. And showing here, you have the three important sources of amino acids. First one is by the hydrolysis of dietary proteins. So basically, we get it from food. Secondly, we can generate our own amino acids. And those amino acids are known as the non-essential amino acids. Or last but not least, we also get some amino acids from the breakdown of tissue proteins, such as the old and damaged cells. So basically, we are recycling all the amino acids. And here you have another classification of amino acids, which could be essential or non-essential. So the non-essential amino acids refers to the ones that we can synthesize ourselves by using the metabolic intermediates from the carbon skeleton of the essential amino acids. While for the essential amino acids, because we cannot synthesize these amino acids, they must be ingested from our diet. Okay, these are the essential and non-essential amino acids. And it's very easy to remember because you have 9-11 or September 11. So we need 9 amino acids from our diet because they are essential. While we can synthesize 11 non-essential amino acids. Again, these are the two functions of amino acids. Number one is to act as the precursor to make the nitrogenous compounds. While second one is to provide energy in time of need especially during starvation. Again, amino acids can be used to make some nitrogenous compounds such as proteins, hormones, neurotransmitters, hemoglobin, melanin, nucleotides, and so on. So without amino acids, we can't really make all these compounds which are all essential to life. As mentioned just now, amino acids are also a source of energy, especially during starvation because they are carbon skeleton can be directly oxidized. So not only this, when you get some excess of glucose, they can be converted into glycogen. That process is known as glycogenesis and it serves as a storage form of glucose molecules. While the process of converting amino acids into glucose is known as gluconeogenesis. So when we have a lot of glucose, during the surplus of energy, eventually these amino acids can also be converted into triacylglycerol, which is the storage form of fat molecules. While in the time of starvation, amino acids can be converted into ketone bodies during ketoacidosis. But where do we store the amino acids? Well, there is no specific storage for the amino acid in the human body while collectively, all the amino acids in our body is known as the amino acid pool. And what are the fates of amino acids? Again, they can either be used up in protein synthesis, or they can be used in the synthesis of some nitrogenous compounds, or they can be used for energy production. 
So, nitrogen balance is an important concept for the amino acid pool. It refers to the difference in between nitrogen intake and excretion, or simply input versus output. In healthy adults, the input equals the output. Therefore, it is in balance. But when the intake is larger than the excretion, then you have got a positive nitrogen balance. So this happens during childhood or pregnancy. But why do you think so? Well, that's because in both children or growing fetus, you will need more protein intake to spur development. Now, on the other hand, when the intake is smaller than the excretion, or when, when the intake is smaller than the output, then you have a negative nitrogen balance. So that usually happens during starvation or during the deficiency of protein intake. Okay, our amino acid pool is roughly 100 gram in total. And that amount should be a constant for any healthy individual as we are always in a nitrogen balance. So where do we get these amino acids from? Well, there are three important sources. Number one is from the breakdown of body proteins. Number two is from our diet. Or number three, from the de novo synthesis of non-essential amino acids. So these are the inputs. What are the outputs? Well, first of all, we could use these amino acids in the synthesis of body proteins. Number two, we can use that to synthesize some nitrogenous compounds such as nucleotides and so on. And these two are actually anabolic reactions. Well, on the other hand, we can actually break down the amino acid. And we use that breakdown products such as the carbon skeleton for energy production. And sometimes when we have the surplus of building blocks and energy, we can convert amino acid into glucose and glycogen for storage or into fatty acid and steroids. While under starvation, we can convert amino acid into ketone bodies to feed your brain and muscle.